Hello dear friends, hi, welcome. My name is August, this is Cozy Rosie Reads. And today I wanted to spice up the environment a little bit and sit outside and talk to you today about all the books that I read in the month of July. So I am at one of my local parks. There are flower fields right behind me. I want this to be kind of a chill video, just casually talk about the books that I read, enjoy being outside. Hopefully the outdoor noises aren't too bad, but we shall see. I just got back from vacation really late last night, so I'm definitely feeling like I just want to continue to be outside and in nature and enjoying the beautiful weather that we have and the beautiful scenery we have here because I just spent a lot of time in the Blue Ridge Mountains in Virginia and exploring national parks and I just want to continue that feeling and kind of just go outside a little bit more. So I have with me all the books that I read in the month of July. There are quite a few. I have not counted yet. I think I only read nine, um, which is pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm gonna try to put them in chronological order, but I'm not sure if I have it correct and I don't really want to leave anything out, but I don't think I will. So we'll go ahead and start. So the first book that I read in the month of July was The Secret of the Villa Mimosa by Elizabeth Adler. This is a pretty chunky book that I ended up giving two stars to, friends, two stars. This was not the best way for me to start off a reading month. In fact, it deterred me so much. I ended up redoing my entire July TBR um, <laughs> on a whim in one of my reading vlogs. So I will link that down below if you're interested. But basically this book follows this Jane Doe who was found um, almost dead in a ravine in San Francisco and when she is found uh, basically there is a kind of attempted murder case that's opened then we're also bouncing to the perspective of this female psychiatrist I'm already forgetting her name <laughs> Dr. Phil how original Dr. Phil and she gets this like really strong sense that she should be a part of this Jane Doe's life and she kind of is with her during her recovery is like this mother figure to her almost and they just kind of fall into this very strange thing where they're trying to solve the case even though there are detectives on board there are a lot of random love triangles i really thought this would be more of like a, a thriller but it ended up being so 1000 percent predictable because you are given all the information you need to solve the crime so there was no suspense really <laughs> i really thought that you know maybe what the author was doing was giving us like a really blatant red herring but it ended up being exactly the way the author wrote it and there was yeah no shocking twists no turns i thought the characters were super weird because while they had like fleshed out backstories the backstories like just didn't impact the plot whatsoever didn't really seem to impact their rationale or their decision making it was just very weird. This is a book that I found in a little free library and while I'm happy I took the risk and picked it up, I will be donating this book because it disappointed me so much, friends, so much. I just really thought it would be like a quirky 80s little thriller romp thing and it ended up not being that at all. It ended up being just a really big disappointment. I thought it was super strange. The pacing was really bizarre too. You're given a lot, a lot of history and backstory into some characters, but at the very end of the book and I'm like what <laughs> so two stars not my favorite way to start a reading month but that's okay because I ended up having a much more successful reading month after this book so stay tuned for those next I read this cutie little book garden spells by Sarah Addison Allen and this is a book that I found at Goodwill absolutely fell in love with the cover the description of it definitely made me think like this was a five-star prediction for me and it was so much fun. This is exactly what I'm kind of looking for when I want like a light summer read. But upon retrospect, I don't think this book really impacted me a whole lot. And I think on Goodreads, I did bump it from like an original four star down to a three star because I completely forgot about this book. But it is really cute. If you're a fan of like practical magic or if you like books that describe like female relationships and characters and friendship, sisterhood mixed with that practical magic kind of vibe of like magical realism, botany, herbs, cooking, a lot of kind of like domestic 
kind of witchiness. This is really fun. This is a really good summer treat, I think. So in this book, we're following two sisters who are kind of estranged. They have a very interesting relationship. So the younger sister, Sydney, has always been kind of rebellious, left home at a pretty young age and went to go just travel the world, got into like some really severe domestic violence situation. So please be cautious going into this one because there definitely are trigger warnings for like sexual abuse and domestic violence. But um, her older sister, Claire, stays in this small town where the Waverleys have always kind of lived and they're this generation of like very quirky women who have a lot of kind of abnormal powers where they have a lot of magical realism. They're very highly intuitive, highly emotional. They use foods and potions kind of things and spices to create different feelings and emotions in other people. So that's kind of how they've lived their lives. Claire runs a really successful catering business in this small town and uh, one day her younger sister just shows up out of the blue and her sister is in danger and she brings along her daughter with her. And it's just about kind of this these sisters reconnecting, refiguring out who they are and their relationship with each other, while also kind of figuring out what their sister dynamics are, as well as kind of their powers. I thought it was just such a delicious treat. If you like descriptions of food and plants and botany and like all of that stuff, I definitely highly recommend this book because it was just so delicious. Like every little description in here just like made me want to like eat this book or eat really wonderful foods or understand botany more or understand the powers of like food and cuisine and cooking more. And I just thought it was like so delightful. But in the end, I think things were incredibly predictable. I also think that there was a lot of emphasis on relationships in here and hetero romances, and I honestly just could have done without, to be honest. I think it would have been a stronger story if it was just about sisterhood or family relationships. I have bugs crawling all over me and I'm trying to be gentle with them. So yeah, overall I gave this three stars because it just wasn't very memorable, but it was really fun to read. I think the ending just really disappointed me because it was pretty predictable. Uh, not a whole lot of like growth on our character's part, not a whole lot of any big, big big plot really feels like it happens, which is fine. I like quiet, I like slow, but this one just kind of felt like at the very end, it was like, oh, let's, let's add this one crazy thing that happens. And I just thought it was a little unnecessary. So overall I gave this three stars, but it was delicious to read. I thought it was like a really wonderful summer treat. Yeah, this is exactly the kind of book I'm looking for in the summer where it doesn't necessarily need to have a really large emotional impact on me. I just want to feel like, a hug, I wanna feel like inspired, I wanna feel creative, I want to feel connected to elements in a story. If it's not characters, then I wanna feel connected to the botany or the gardens. And the magical realism in this was just like perfect. Like there's a magic apple tree in the backyard that if you eat the fruits off of the apple, something wild happens to you. I won't say what, cause I thought it was really cool. And yeah, just using like intuition as almost like a magical realism thing, I thought was really, really cool. My favorite character in here though was Evelyn. I think she actually might have been one of my favorite characters so far this year of reading. She's just this quirky older lady who has the intuition and the gift that uh, she just knows what people will need either tomorrow or six months or like six years from now so she will give them an item that will eventually come of use to them. So I just I just love like that kind of like intuitive magical realism fantasticalness, but it's still very probable. It could probably happen and it could be a real gift that people have. So I just, I thought it was really cute, really fun. So three stars overall, I enjoyed it. Next, I finally finished an audiobook. It has been so long since I've read and finished a freaking audiobook. And that was The Swallowed Man by Edward Carey. I ended up buying a paperback copy because I loved it so much and I think I would love it even more if I read it as a physical book as opposed to listening to it. So this book is a retelling of Pinocchio and it's all told from the perspective of Geppetto, Pinocchio's father, as he is writing this whole story in the belly of the whale that swallowed him. And it is eerie, it is creepy, it is funny, it is wild and weird and 
macabre and dark and I loved it. I loved this book. This was such a truly unique read. Um, at the time of finishing the audiobook I gave it four stars but I really genuinely do believe that if I physically read it it would probably be a five star because I think that the physical reading experience might be a little bit more enjoyable because there are mixed media in here. There are these really awesome eerie illustrations. There's a lot of like just photos and drawings because this is kind of like Geppetto's diary almost as he's in the whale and he talks about the origin of Pinocchio, what inspired him to make him, the conversations he and Pinocchio have which are just really like almost laugh out loud funny. It's just Edward Carey is a really talented author. Like things just are so fast and funny and believable even though it is magical realism of this puppet becoming alive. I just thought this was so enjoyable. I definitely recommend the physical copy. Um, the audiobook was okay. The author narrates it himself and at first I thought it was just like so delightful because he's really animated and really like into his characters. But the more I was listening to it the more I got a little like kind of aggravated with his voice because he would just get a little too over dramatic and very like <laughs> don't hate me like theater kid vibes where like things are just really like loud and over dramatic and just very out there very uh I don't know the right word I'm looking for but yeah I so I definitely recommend maybe the paperback version or just the the physical print version in general there is a spider on me it's a jumping spider so yeah overall I gave this four stars I thought it was the perfect mix of funny wonderful storytelling and eeriness like there were parts in this that I was actually getting freaked out like it was super creepy and I thought it was just such a wonderful spin on a classic tale like Pinocchio and I'm not one who reads fairy tales it's definitely something I want to get into because I have several copies of original fairy tales at home but I just feel like something like this that was published just last year in 2020 I had never heard of and I just feel really, really lucky that I was able to read it and read this really imaginative retelling. Like, oh my gosh, this was so good. This might've been my favorite book so far that I've read in July. Um, as I kind of peruse and go back in them, like it'll be interesting to see my final thoughts on that. But for now, this is definitely, I think my favorite book that I read in July. It did take me a long time to read it because audiobooks just like have not really been vibing with me lately. So yeah, that's The Swallowed Man. Next, I read a wonderful little book called The Tribes of Palos Verdes by Joy Nicholson. This is a book that I found at Dollar Tree, brand new for $1. And this was such a freaking surprise to me. This was such a surprise. So first off, this was written in the 1990s and I love that. I love the 90s grunge teenage angst vibes because we are following a 14 year old girl who is a little awkward. She is not super popular. She's kind of bullied at school. Um, she doesn't really have a whole lot of friends and her family dynamics are horrible. Like incredibly manipulative, incredibly like just toxic and awful so definitely trigger warnings for that for some like sexual abuse kind of stuff that just really complicated dynamic tragic family dynamics it was difficult to read because i was like oh my gosh this poor girl is having a really hard time she has a twin brother named jim and jim starts to kind of fall into a little bit of like drug addiction and she watches him kind of like deteriorate in this family relationship as things get more and more difficult and heavy with their family he starts to turn more to drugs so content warning for that as well and she decides to turn to the ocean and she takes up surfing and she is continuously trying to prove herself to all the boys that are surfing she's one of the only female surfers and she's really trying to get better at it she's incredibly passionate about surfing but what i enjoyed the most out of this book is the writing style so each little thing it's almost like it's just told in vignettes where you just immediately just from the first few pages get a sense of the family dynamics passive aggressive comments between the different characters in the family um what she the main character medina is passionate about what she likes how she observes her family how she views them i loved the vignette style because sometimes it would be like a whole page um, sometimes it would just be like two or three sentences of a vignette and so you really don't have like a sense of how much time has passed but you're just getting little glimpses of her daily life and I just thought it was 
incredibly well written friends i think it was so well written again i love like teenage angst and drama i think it's really really interesting there was a man up there looking at me and scared me a little bit yeah at least i'm filming friends if anything happens you know where i am yeah so i just think the writing style was so unique and strong and powerful and then the ending of this book was so sad so while it is like a literary fiction where it is like a lot of character development and that kind of stuff, I think that there's just a really, really strong sense of plot at the same time. There are some very difficult, heavy things that happen, but plot wise, it does just continue to get stronger and build up this momentum where by the end you're like, oh my God, like you just feel awful, you feel sad, you feel devastated, you feel like blindsided. Overall, I gave this four stars, but it's more like 4.25 or four and a half. I thought it was just so well done. It really surprised me. It really came out of left field based on the cover because it was made into a movie. I really did think that it would just be a little bit more teenagery, a little bit more summery, maybe some hokey teenage angst, but no, this is powerful literary fiction. And if you're a fan of the book Creatures by Chrissy Van Meter, I definitely recommend this book to you because it has the same kind of like just emotional depth, but also descriptions of this beautiful place, this beautiful affluent community right by the ocean. And there's just a lot of different elements going on in this and it really, really worked. So that is the Tribes of Palos Verdes. The next three books that I read are all very, very short and I included them all in a reading vlog I did. So I will link that down below. But the first one I read was For Colored Girls Who Have Considered Suicide Side when the Rainbow is Enough by Entuzake Shange, and this is a choreo poem that was published in the 1970s. This was such a unique read. This really, really genuinely pulled me out of my comfort zone and really made me think outside of the box, made me question what I was reading, question the way I was reading it, um, everything like that. I thought it was truly unique and interesting and very thought-provoking. The writing is amazing. The writing is impeccable. It's very fragmented because it is supposed to be performed like on stage as a poem. So there are multiple characters and in this there are also these little side things that talk about what the people on stage look like and what they're doing, where they enter, where they exit the stage, which I thought was incredibly interesting. So while there isn't really a narrative in this or characters that we know of and can relate to, it was still incredibly profound and you can really feel for these people because the actors on stage will just start talking about people that they know by their first name and you're like I don't know who these people are you're talking to us as if we're supposed to know and then they start to unravel their backstories and who they are and what their life was like and it's heartbreaking and sad there are so many really important and difficult topics in here so a lot of content warnings for racism, sexual assault, domestic violence, physical assault, just a whole lot, um, as well as drug addiction. But basically it does talk about kind of the black experience in the 1970s to like 1990s, because I think this was revised up until like the 1990s, but it was originally published in the 70s, based on my understanding. And it is so artistic and unique, and it just made me like really think about writing as a craft, as an art form, as a medium, really. Like, what is writing? Sometimes it doesn't just have to be a linear story or or even a narrative. Like, it can be a, a play that is then just written out as a poem, and then it can just be formatted to whatever medium because it's been made into a movie and musicals and plays and there are a lot of photographs in the back as well of all the different performances that it's kind of gone through, the different iterations of it, how the characters were more fleshed out in those. I just think this was truly unique, really amazing and interesting. I definitely recommend it if you are interested in just like giving this a go. It's very, very short, easy to fly through, but the writing style and the uniqueness of it definitely sticks with you. So overall, I gave this four stars. I really think it challenged me as a reader and I needed that. I really wanted that and it was just really enjoyable and truly, truly a unique read. Next, I read a collection of short stories called Vermeer's Milkmaid by Manuel Rivas. I found this at a used bookstore many years ago and I finally had the chance to read it. It is very, very incredibly short and this was 
okay. This collection of short stories I think really showed like how Manuel Rivas's writing style, because it is translated as well from Galatian, but it really showed like how talented he is as an author and I've never read anything by Manuel Rivas. But this book definitely made me want to pick up a novel of his or I don't even know if he's written any novels, but just kind of like look into his earlier works and backlist and maybe keep an eye out for it while I'm out thrifting or something because his writing style was really beautiful and enjoyable and I think the way that he tells stories is so gorgeous. A lot of the stories seem to focus a lot on adolescents or younger characters, either that or much older characters who are looking back on their life in retrospect. So there is a lot of elements of youth, a lot of elements of like really daily simple pleasures, a lot of like romances. Some of my favorite stories in here were ones that definitely had a little bit more of like a an eerie, almost mystery or thriller element to it. I think those definitely kept me on my toes a little bit more and made me feel a little bit more engrossed in the stories. But there was something just incredibly romantic about this collection in general, and I think it's because it was written in the 1990s. But when reading it, you could basically have almost all the stories, except for maybe a few, you could imagine them at almost any time period. And I think there's something really romantic about that, right? Right? Like it's like something that, you know, when you look at a black and white photograph, sometimes you can't tell like when that was actually taken. There is this like timelessness to it, this classicness. And I think that his writing style is kind of the embodiment of that. So overall, I did enjoy the short story collection. I think there were like three or four stories that really stood out to me. But overall, the collection went by really, really quickly because this is a very short book. Um, but some of them just didn't really impact me as much, but there are some that I can still remember very clearly and I did enjoy them. So overall, I did give this three stars. It was enjoyable, very easy to read, and I really hope I can read more by this author sometime soon. Next, I read another quick little ditty and that was Aquamarine by Alice Hoffman. This was a reread for me, but I have not read it since I myself was like 11 years old or something. So it was just such a divine little treat. It was so cute. So if you're not familiar, Aquamarine follows two young girls named Haley and Claire, and they are actually about to move away. They've been best friends for as long as they can remember, and they're experiencing this last summer together before one of them moves away. And when they are getting ready to separate and they're enjoying their last summer together as much as they can, they meet a mermaid named Aquamarine. This was so cute. It flew by so fast. I mean, look at that font size. This is like much more middle grade than I remember. I thought this would be kind of a little bit more YA, but it was definitely more middle grade kind of vibes. And I just thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it was so freaking cute. If you like the movie Aquamarine, definitely pick up the book. It is so interesting because Aquamarine herself as the mermaid is definitely very different in the book versus the movie. In the book, she's a little bit more sassy. She doesn't talk as much. She doesn't really uh, make a significant bond with the girls. Uh, she really is there just to kind of fall in love with Raymond, one of the lifeguard guys at this kind of beach club. And it was just really sweet. It's the perfect summer read. I read it in an hour while sitting outside and it was just a wonderful way to just soak up some rays, a great little beach read or sit by the pool and read it in like an hour or two. It was cute, it was fun, I enjoyed it, four stars, yeah. Next, I read a very interesting book called In the Palm of Darkness by Myra Montero. This is a book that I found at a very unique shop uh, while I was on my camping trip back in June. And there was this old woman who had an entire like basement filled with books and her bookstore was in her house. And I thought it was so divine. They had so many unique books like this one. This was again, written in the 1990s. Can you sense a theme for July? I think it was translated books from the 1990s or maybe just 1990s literary fiction in general. But yeah, this is translated from Spanish in the 1990s and wow, this was so unique, friends. I really went into this thinking it would be a five-star prediction for me. I was wholeheartedly believing that this would be five-star. The writing itself is so strong and confident and beautiful and strange and absurd and weird, but basically we're following and bouncing between two kind of perspectives. One is this very acclaimed scientist slash biologist living in Cuba, and he studies frogs specifically, and he's sent on this quest to go to Haiti to go find this almost extinct frog, which is featured on the cover here, it's the blood frog. And then it also bounces between this other guy named Thierry, and he lives 
in Haiti and he has a really tragic kind of upbringing and backstory but he's always had a passion for frogs as well he just didn't have the institutional education of frogs he just more of like found it as a hobby and a passion to be out in the rainforests of Haiti to escape kind of like his family and to escape his very like difficult political climate and dangerous cities that were in Haiti at this time so the two of them get together and they traverse these mountainsides these rainforests searching for this extinct frog and we're just getting a lot of backstory on both of them we're getting a lot of very difficult topics specifically from theory's perspective um and so there are definitely some content warnings for torture animal sacrifice animal cruelty uh sexual abuse a lot of very complicated family relationships that have a lot of blurred lines that you're like this is okay and like legal but like it's a very uncomfortable so yeah just be cautious going into it i think by about like maybe a little before the middle to the last like 10 pages i was getting a little like defeated with this book i was starting to feel like maybe it really wasn't a five star like it was starting to feel a little slow it was starting to feel a little like meandering i wasn't quite sure what this is i knew it was a literary fiction i knew it would take a little bit out of me to read it because it is a little bit more character development um, a lot of darker elements which i typically usually love but it just started to get a little tedious but the last two pages of this book thoroughly shocked me it blew my socks off my jaw was on the floor i was like what it was heartbreaking it was devastating it was sad i think it was a perfect way to wrap up this book and to really make you feel for these characters even more than you kind of thought you would because it did feel a little difficult to finish the book not going to lie it felt a little laborious but by that end it just really blew my socks off i thought it was really well done so overall i did give it four stars but in retrospect i think this is more of like a three star book for me it once i finished it i didn't really think about it again and that's okay you know not every book is going to have that impact on you that sticks with you or makes you feel incredibly emotional when you think about it and that's okay so overall i think this is more like a three star book but incredibly unique and interesting and i'm just i'm so grateful that i got to read it okay friends here we are this is the last book that i read in the month of july and that was wicked river by jenny milchman I completely deviated from my July TBR for this one because I really, really wanted to read it before I went on my vacation because it follows a young couple as they just got married and they're on their honeymoon and they decide to backpack in the Adirondack Forest and a lot of shit ensues. Basically, we're following this couple, Natalie and Doug, and you know, they're not very experienced backpackers. They're making a lot of mistakes. They are making very poor decisions. But this was such a page turner. This was such a thriller. It was a page turner. It was wild. It was so fun. It was just so enjoyable to read. I, I missed having like two to four page long chapters and every single one ends on a cliffhanger. It was so addicting, friends. It was so addicting to read. I just felt like I just didn't want to put it down. And it had been so long since I had a book that I genuinely just didn't want to put down. So while they are in the woods, they meet this man. And he originally went to the Adirondack for forest many years before and he was part of this society that wanted to create their own utopia in the woods away from civilization but the rest of the group kind of gave up and chickened out and decided to return to civilization but he is unable to and he decides to just accept it and make his life in the woods there's a plane so he's in the woods making all these booby traps he has a machete he is trying to make the forest like a weapon and he's trying to kidnap hikers to have them stay with him so he can grow this utopia the civilization that he always imagined and i just thought it was really thrilling i thought it was super fun i thought it was really really enjoyable my only issue with it though at the very very end it just got really hokey like the dialogue was hokey um the situation was hokey i think things wrapped up a little too nicely um and by the end i just kind of like didn't really care about natalie and doug but i think that their relationship was incredibly interesting i think that was the most interesting part for me in this book was their complicated relationship with each other the power dynamics in this relationship was really really well done doug definitely has this sense of wanting control and power over natalie natalie wants to stand up for herself but she continuously questions 
her husband, Doug, and is questioning his motives and his intentions. So you as the reader, you're like, oh, Doug is either a sketchy guy or Natalie just has a lot of trust issues. I just loved psychoanalyzing these characters so much. I thought it was really refreshing. I thought it was really enjoyable. But overall, I just gave it three stars because the ending was predictable. It, it wrapped up too nicely. I think the climax was a little not super interesting. I think the climax was just kind of like whoop and then done. You know, like a little a little roller coaster hill. It's like whoa, and then it was like oh, oh, oh that was it. Okay. So overall, I gave that book three stars. So there we have it, friends. Those are all the books that I read in the month of July. Hopefully I got them all. I think I did. But thank you so incredibly much for being here, friends. Thank you so much for watching and staying tuned. I appreciate you all so, so much. I hope you're doing well. I'm so happy there's a breeze right now. That feels so good. I am so sweaty. Thank you so much for being here, friends. I am so excited to see you again very soon for my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye!